Hi, I'm Rick Paris. Welcome to Conscious Reality Creator. Um, I've been studying metaphysics for about 30 years. I've been teaching it for about 28. And I had a death experience which gave me a, a perspective outside the set, let's say. And so I have a lot to teach and I'm here to share what I learned from that as experiences for anybody who may not have seen the other videos. So thank you for being here and today we're going to talk about control because control is <laughs> so prevalent in our experience, right? For most people they think control is getting my way, pushing, pushing to get my way. That's one form of control, but you can also see somebody moving to get their way as a form of responsibility. So you have to be able to look under what is going on with control. For instance, some people can be very open in a relationship and I don't control my relationship, but when I get to work I control everybody like crazy because people believe control is power. Control is the antithesis to love, freedom, and creativity. All control is a function of fear. And that fear is I'm afraid I'm not going to get love, I'm afraid that I won't hold on to love, or I'm afraid that I won't be able to respond to the love later. We control when love feels like it needs to be made safe. The minute that you try to make love safe, you're in control. And you know, of course this comes from childhood and you know, you're taught to control as soon as possible. We live in a paradigm of control, a chauvinistic paradigm based in hierarchy. So most people get a degree in college out of a sense of control of the future. Like if I do this, this will ensure me an outcome, which you see most people all they have now is debt. They didn't get anything that they wanted out of that degree. They controlled and they went to school and they were forced to think a certain way and to do a certain curriculum so I could come. I'll give all that up because I'm going to come out on top in the end. And how many people work at Starbucks with a college degree? It's it's a, it's a form of control because the adolescent is petrified of the future and the only thing they know what to do is control. And because they're afraid of the love. They're afraid of the love so they're trying to avoid love because it's scaring them. So the intensity directly correlates to how much love is there. And it fluxes and it flows because you might not be that controlling in a relationship at the beginning. You may be like, hey, you know what? This is awesome. I love it, right? And, but as love grows, though, you'll wake up one day and you're being utterly controlling because you got scared. You, you got scared. The love scared you. Like, maybe I can't respond to all this love coming my way, so I'm going to get out. I mean, how many times when you're in a relationship or about to get in a relationship, all of us have heard, I'm not really for a commitment. I'm not ready for a commitment yet. Um, you know, I just want to be free and have fun and I want to have sex and I want to enjoy that but I don't want too much. You know, that is a function of control. Already trying to control the environment. I mean, I did this. I did this to, <laughs> I did it openly. I would say, look, sex is going to be great. It's going to be fun. We're going to have a great time but it's going to last like one, two or three months tops. Something's going to happen and I'm going to see it and I'm going to stop the relationship. And really it was love. I start seeing maybe they get jealous or maybe they get angry or maybe they'd be starting calling me too much and I'd be like, hey, 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 I told you this was going to happen. So pfft, I'm cutting it off now because I don't want you to get hurt. And, and, and people would appreciate that in the end but it was really control. That's another thing that happens in control. The hierarchy of needs, Maslow's hierarchy of needs, those are also running. I, maybe I won't feel, be safe and secure if I don't do this. Maybe I can die, right? That's why a lot of fear and control around love is death because I'm going to lose that love, right? So I start controlling. People get sick and they start making, you need to start doing this and I need to better start changing my life and I've got to start eating a different way, which that's control, right? It's not necessarily that those things aren't true but the function behind it is to go into control. 
when, you know, of course, when you understand more about healing, you start realizing that healing is a function of understanding a negative belief construct. It's not about what I'm eating. It's about how I feel about what I'm eating. Like, if you think smoking is going to give you cancer, you better stop smoking or you better be able to change that belief. One or the other. You see people, the current spiritual archetype where people are... I get up at 5 o'clock in the morning, I go to the gym, I only eat non-GMO, vegan, I don't eat meat anymore because, you know, we all know that's not the right thing to do anymore. Boom, so much control to try to have this life that I want, this life. And so in the, mean, in the meantime, you're not really in love. And what happens when you go into that kind of control is it cuts you off from your higher self. It cuts you off from receiving. It cuts you off from imagining something new because you're super focused on the way you want to be. All because you're afraid of love. You will never feel a sense of self-esteem. You won't feel a sense of trust. You won't build the willfulness of receiving and understanding I can't receive while I'm in control. What I'm doing is opting to turn everything off and go after what I want the way that I want it and anything in my way I'm going to make it happen. And how many stories do we think that's a beautiful story? So I will tell you this and I feel very confident saying there's probably 99% of the people that are going to look at it and go, well, I'm not really in control. I don't control. I don't control my boyfriend. I don't control my, my friends. And like, but I don't drink and I don't do any drugs and I don't eat meat. And I don't, I'm, I'm trying to become a breatharian. That's, you know, because I have so much control. Control, control, control. And so control is what most people are using to get what they want, you know. And of course, they, they don't want to lose the love, so they'll, they'll learn to manipulate very subtly. Like, I'm not telling you what to do, but this is the way it makes me feel, or this is the way it makes me... That's control. Because when you're loving... You're, you're here to be a loving and understanding person. You're not here for other people to love you and understand you. So the control often comes up in those environments because the adolescent is still wanting to be loved and wanting to be understood. So they're trying to control people around them in order for them to feel fulfilled. A lot of times when you're controlling somebody, they'll say, why are you controlling? I'm not controlling you. I'm just trying to, like, I see things a certain way and I'm trying to communicate that or I'm trying to move us somewhere. You know, that's all control, 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 right? Rather than be honest to learn how to trust, right? Because control circumvents trust. It circumvents receiving because that, I, in order to receive, I have to be in love to receive. And since I'm afraid I won't be able to receive it, I'd much rather control the situation. When people are in control, you can always see there's a, a wake of pain behind them. You see a wake of pain behind all the politics right now. The, the right and the left trying to control each other and the liberals trying to control from their perspective. And of course, it shorts you out when you think about that. Like, well, what, what are we going to do, love? You don't know how to do that yet because you've been afraid of it for so long. You think... Justice only comes through control. That's what you're thinking. The Me Too movement, Black Lives Matter, all this stuff, white privilege. This is just shaming. I'm going to shame you now. I've been shamed my whole life and now I'm going to shame you. So I'm controlling you with shame. You see, these types of things aren't going to find the answer. Everybody's in control and they're not recognizing it's choking you. It's choking you, you're choking yourself, you're choking the people around you. So control is a devastating thing to do for a conscious person. Now, if you're not really waking up and you're not really trying to that whole thing, then you probably stay in control for a long time. You know, because control works. It doesn't give you any sense of fulfillment. It doesn't give you any good feelings. It doesn't make, you don't get a feel of, you know, uh, not accomplishment, because control can give you a sense of accomplishment, but it never gives you a sense of achievement. You never feel like, wow, look what I did. It's, so, uh, it's like, yeah, I did that. But, you know, what I had to go through for that, it hardly feels even worth it now to me by the time I get here. I'm exhausted. I'm, not even, I'm sick. I'm, uh, I need to sleep for a week, and I need to turn my phone off now, because I was in so much control for so long. Now I'm going to lay down and 
try to receive myself, right? So if you're not in the moment enjoying yourself and loving yourself and being, you're, you're not going to gain that self-esteem that comes with receiving. Only receiving can give you. But there is a place for earning. There is a place for gaining reward. But you have to have some perspective about that. It's not control. I don't want to go into control. I want to be out of control. I want love to be right here for me. I want to respond to the love. I'm afraid. When I'm in control, I'm afraid of responding to the love, so I'm opting for control. Control is, I mean, I already said it, but I, maybe I'll say it again. It's about avoiding fear. All control is about avoiding fear around love. It's not about like, well, I need to do this and I need to do that. And, you know, I, at work, I control because that's my job. I'm here to control. And that's not true. That's the way you figured it out. And maybe because everybody else is controlling and trying to think that, wow, look how great they control. I wish I could control as good as you can. It's like control is not healthy. It's just an old way of doing things that will not satiate your internal self. You will not be in love. You will not get more love. You will not move towards love. It is putting you out of love constantly, consistently. And to the degree that you control is the degree that you're afraid of not having that. So while you're in control, you're actually already done. You're already out of love. And so part of being answering the spiritual challenge is to be the spiritual fool to not back into control but to plunge forward into love that's the spiritual fool the most powerful spiritual position you could have and of course that's going to be scary when I say that that's going to bother people when I say that now the only thing you need to really do when you're in control is remember the love that's the only way that you can put down control. You have to make yourself remember, I'm trying to hang on to what little love I feel I have. Or I'm trying to hang on to, and I'm not even trying to hang on, I just want love. I just want love. And I can get it this way. I can get it this way. If you're over there going right now, he mentioned the Me Too move. He mentioned Black Lives well, That's right. And you're getting intense and you want to go after it. That's the intensity. That's how much love is behind there that you're avoiding by controlling. That feeling that, fuck you, man. That, those guys. It, that's control. That has to stop. That whole paradigm has to end. And the only way it will end is to remember the love. And then you'll be back into love and you will be able to figure it out. You'll have an imaginative way that doesn't force somebody into a mold, doesn't force yourself into a space. So you must remember the love. Same thing I teach when you're in self-pity, remember the love. When you're in martyr, remember the love. When you're in guilt, remember the love. You have to learn to return to love and what that means, not control. So since love is so scary, what you're, to, to remember this, am I trying to get love? Am I trying to hold love? Or am I afraid I'm not going to be able to respond to love in the future? These are the three positions that you're in control over. So you have to recognize, am I trying to get love? And how am I going about doing this? Can I back up and realize, I'm going after this point for justice because I think this is what it takes to love. When the other person is arguing with you or, or resisting you, shoving your idea down their throat isn't loving. You've got to respect. Second step to change. First, I recognize I'm trying to get love here or I'm trying to keep the love that is here right now. I don't want to lose this. This is why people won't tell the truth in front of each other because they're afraid, I only have this piece, and if I tell the truth, I might lose this love. So you have to be honest. You have to be forthright. You have to care enough about your own opinion, and you have to care about the opinion of the other person. And you have to find a way to love. 
how do I honor myself and how do I honor another person? Negative judgments only separate you. You cannot negative judge something and love it at the same time. And you can't love yourself while you're doing it either. Negative judgments are a way to control the outcome. I'm going to take you, negative judge you, and now you're in a box. You're red, or you're blue, or you're this, or you eat meat, or you, right? And now they're in a box and it's easy for me to... So that's not loving. You have to open to dialogue, not dogma. It's not about all the things I read mean lead to this. Science... You have to stop doing that. You have to remember the love. You have to remember the love, and that's love for yourself and love for another or whomever else. And we have to find a way to go for love. And now you'll be imaginative, you'll be creative, and you'll be in love, and you will feel better coming to a result that way. You have to come to the understanding that control is the denial of love. So going back to love is not like, go and be like, peace and love to everyone. Loving someone is more intense than the intensity you feel around the control. Because the fear of losing that love is creating the intensity. That love that's behind that fear is more intense than the control. That's what you want to find. And you may not be able to open it immediately and find this love, but this... This is the love that you need to find now. You need, and you know, I can't really tell you what that is because the moment's going to tell you what that is. What is it that I'm going to have to become now to drop my control, to drop my anger that control creates, to drop the, um, yeah, it's just a denial, the denial that you're in in that moment and you can't see your way out anymore. So, give it a go. Drop the control. It's going to be a process. You've been controlling for a long time. Your parents taught you how to do it. When you were wounded as an adolescent, it tempered control. You've been doing it for a long time. It's just time to begin the process of moving yourself back to love.